Hello everyone and welcome to the walkthrough video of Grain Forest. I'll do my best to walk through it as quick as I can, but it's pretty in-depth device, so here we go. So down here we have Grain Forest, I'll turn it on. We can see there's some sticks growing, these are the trees. Um, if we click on this visual, it pops out uh, all the settings of the device. So here's what we'll be working. Uh, here's Grain Forest. Um, okay, so what is Grain Forest? Grain Forest is a granular synth, and um, the w way that the the granular synth plays back and does effects is uh, informed by a forest simulation. And this is a forest that can breed, it can share DNA, it can evolve. Um, and all this makes um, an evolving soundscape as a result. So uh, let's talk more about what that means. So you can see there's these little trees and they're shooting out these little seeds right now. And in the background, there's these little white dots. So the white dots are pollen. These trees are all releasing pollen. And when pollen touches another tree of the same species, it might create a new seed. So that's great. And what are these trees? Well, each of these trees is a granular voice. So this one tree here is a voice. This is another voice. All these are grain voices. So right now we see about, I don't know, 12 or more voices of grains. Um, okay, I'll explain more about how this works, but let me just drop in a sound so we can hear this while I explain things. So I'll drop in this sample. I'll drop it right here to this sample drop, and um, I'll enable that sample. Okay, let's clear the force so we can see them all. Okay. Let me turn down the gain. Okay, so now we see all these voices. Let me make it more obvious. I'll have a, a window and a longer grain size. Great, so hopefully those settings made it a little more obvious that each of these trees are an independent uh, grain. And, um, and their brightness is by the current volume of the fade, so you can kind of get a little bit more of a visual understanding of which grain is making which sound. Okay, so um, the big thing to take away is um, that yeah, each of these are grains, and that they can breed more grains, and that they share DNA, and that DNA will change how they sound, depending on how you set that. And I'm going to get all that into that what that means later when I get into this section. So first, I'm just going to go through each section so you understand how each of them work. And as I go along, especially in the tree one, you'll better understand how genetics and all play into this. All right, I'll try to go quickly. Um, so up here, we'll start here. And this section deals with the main um, simulation settings. So we have the maximum number of trees that can exist at once. So if I bring this number down, we can see it matches. Now we only can have three trees. Let's just leave it for three trees to keep things simple. Um, so now only three trees at a time could grow. Uh, this clear button clears all of the trees and seeds in the forest. Uh, this speed is the speed of the simulation. That doesn't control the speed of the audio playback, but just how quickly the simulation goes. Um, okay. This save button saves the current state of the forest. So if I wanted to save it right when these two trees are like this and the pollen's all like that, I'd press save. And then when you reload the live set or reload a preset, it will load those two trees again. Uh, it won't reload the recorded audio though, and I'll get into that a bit later. Um, <clears throat> okay, then this revert button says that if it's on, then every time I run live set, it will recall that saved state. So let me save a state. So I'll save it right when they're there. So they were just about there. And now I'll press revert and now I'll start live set transport and you see every time I start and stop the transport which I'm doing right now if you can't see um, it goes right back it reverts right back to that save state and I'll just turn this off 
All right, freeze freezes the simulation, but playback still occurs. Um, okay, wind controls the wind intensity and direction. So as you can see, the pollen is being blown in the seeds by the wind. So if I change the wind to the other side, now the pollen's going to go that way. Uh, let me turn up the trees so we get a higher, we get more pollen in the air. And let me speed up so we just get there. All right, so there's all this pollen. Now if I turn wind down all the way, uh, everything will slow down. Let me clear it so that we just get that too. Uh, oh, sorry, the wind chaos is already on. All right, so now you see things are just dropping straight down. Um, and um, okay, and then you next to wind is this little knob that adds chaos. So if I add chaos, now the pollen, you see it's kind of going back and forth. It might go up a little. So chaos just like adds some chaotic oscillations to the wind. And if I turn up the speed, you can really probably see it. Um, yeah. All right. And so I'll just keep it going left. It's nice to have it going one direction, but it just depends what you need. Um, all right. Below that is gravity. That should be kind of obvious. Uh, it's just stronger gravity, things being pulled down f faster. And this little thing here is random death. So the trees, they live for a certain lifetime, and that you can see that here. They're living for 10 seconds. But if you turn up random death, then there's a higher likelihood a tree will die before it reaches its end of lifetime. And if I turned it all the way up high, they're not even going to really live at all. They're just going to die. Okay, so that's this section. Um, let's skip this soil for now and jump across to this section here. So this section here deals with how we hear the trees play back. Um, and the way we're hearing it now is through this listening box. And um, if I turn the listening box off, just none of the trees will play back. And if I turn it back on, they're going to play back. Now, the listening box, we can't see it because it's just a line at the bottom. But if I bring it up, there it is, that line. And if I make this, here's the listening box. And the listening box says that like any tree that's inside this box will play back, basically. So if I made the width small, now we're only hearing this tree in the middle. And if I go to the right, now we only hear that tree, and so on. So yeah, that's kind of how the listening box works. Um, yeah, that's how the, and so it just loops indefinitely if it's in the listening box. Um, here, let me turn this lifetime up so they live a bit longer and breed a bit more. Um, and I guess I could just turn the max trees up. Okay, so now let's turn off the listening box. The other way to play back trees is to drag your mouse across them or click them directly. See, if I drag my mouse, it will play the trees that I drag to. And then it, and you can see that's controlled here. And then it says how many times it repeats when you drag it. So right now it repeats it four times. The grain plays back four times if I touch it. And I could turn that to one. So now it's just one time. You see? And let me turn down the grain size and turn up the repeats to like 15. And then you get stuff like that. Um, OK. The other thing you can do is record and loop So uh, these mouse things. So right now I pressed record, and now I'm drawing. And then I'll press off record. And now look, it's playing back what I just drew with my mouse. And if I want to add more, I just press the record again and keep drawing. And it'll just add it to the loop until you press clear. It'll just keep adding it. And um, you can also just stop playing it, whatever you like. I'll just clear it and turn back on this um, listener. OK, so OK, so we have the listening box. Let me just make the listening box to its default. And we just hear the whole forest now. Um, OK. Let me even turn that off for a second. All right, so now let's get into the more meaty part of it, the soil and then the trees. Um, OK, so 
Yeah, the trees, they grow out of this soil. And the soil is this like brown line here. But you can also add in other soils. Like here's another soil. Now we have a green line. We can make the, so the ground more green or more brown. Um, or the brown bigger. Or we can add in another soil. But what is the soil? Well, the soil is like, think of it as like the trees grow out of the soil, right? So the trees are samplers, you know, they're grains and they're sampling. So what are they sampling? It's the soil they're growing out of. So that means that each of these soils represents a mix of audio sources. And um, those sources are here. And so as you saw earlier, I dropped in a sample here and turned on this file. And these other things are off. So this source, this brown soil, and I can turn it off and on, this brown soil is this audio, the playback of this sound file. Um, and so that means that these trees growing out of the brown source are sampling this audio file. So just to reiterate that, the soil represents a sound source or, or a mix of sources. And the trees that grow on top of a soil, they sample from that source as they grow. And not only that, this tree line is, is a visual representative of the buffer. So if you, you can think of these all as little vertical buffers of samples, and at the bottom of the trees is the first sample they started recording, and at the top of the trees is the last sample. So once the tree stops growing, it stops sampling from the source. So, so um, that being said, let's go back to this listener box, and let's turn just one tree on. And let's turn down the grain size. And if I m move up on the y-axis, it moves the start position of where it plays back. Let me turn up the gain so you can hear that a bit better. And uh, let a new tree start growing. I'll turn up the lifetime. OK, so now I'll move up and down the tree. Great. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, where this vertical y-axis is, is the sample that it recorded. Now, uh, the listening box is just a line, so it can only play at one spot. But if the listening box is an area, then every new grain playback, it can choose from any spot within here. And I'll, I'll show you that by making the width from a line to an area. So here's a line, it's just only one spot, and I move to area. See, and now in the area, it's playing back from any of these starting points in that area. Okay, I hope that um, makes sense. Um, all right, so, yeah, so let's continue on with the soil. So yeah, the soil is the sound that they're sampling from. And in the settings of the soil, you can say, well, you can change the gain of the sound source. You can change the size of the soil. Um, and then you have these three different audio source options. So right now, we have file on. That means it's going to play back from a drop sample. Uh, we can pitch that sample. So now it's like an octave or more higher. Um, and then, um, yeah, so, and then you can choose the range of the playback. Um, other than file, you can also route from another audio. So let me turn off file and let me route, I guess, from my mic. Um, okay, so now it should be routing from my mic. Let's clear the forest so we can hear that. Hey. Cool, so you see it sampled my voice. If I move up. All right, cool. And then the other option is to sample directly from the input. So that would be like, because this is an audio effect, so any sound coming directly into Grain Forest, either on an instrument track or whatever, that's what input does. And this is on by default. And so you can mix these. You can have all these on, or you can have just one of them. So let's say I had the brown soil as my voice routing. No, let me turn this off. 
let's have the brown as this sample playback that we originally had. And then let's add a green source, make it 50%. Uh, sorry about that. It's just a weird computer thing. Um, anyway, uh, let's make it 50%. And then um, let's have the green soil be my mic. So the brown so soil is the sample we dropped, and the green soil is my mic. So any trees that grow on the green soil will have my voice sampled, and any trees that grow on the brown soil will have uh, that, that drop sample. So let me clear the force, and let's hear how that sounds. And I'll sing a little, or I don't know. <laughs> Cool. I mean, it's not very balanced. I think the sample is a lot quieter than my voice, but hopefully you can hear that both my sam my voice and that are playing. Let me turn up the green. Cool. So this is how you can do multi-sample processing with um, grain forest. All right. So hopefully that clears up the whole deal with the so soil and stuff like that. Um, let's... Let's go down to the even the most important section maybe is this tree section. So this is where you can control different tree species. Right now we've only been dealing with the pink species of tree, but you also have yellow, green, and blue. So you can have up to four different tree species. Let's just work with one for now. Um, and then you have three parameter menus for a tree. You have like the parameters about how it grows and everything. You have the playback parameters and then you have the effects parameters. All right, so let's talk about this and how DNA works um, with these. Well, first, you know, you can turn the tree off and on here. Uh, you can press plant to just drop more seeds manually. Um, they're not going to grow, maybe, because it's only seven trees right now. All right, and then you can clear that one specific kind of tree if you don't want to clear the whole forest. All right, then up here it says, what happens if the tree becomes extinct? Like, if all of these trees die and the seeds die, uh, what happens? You can either have the tree species stay dead, you know, and then you could either just manually plant it or whatever, or you can have it automatically drop a set number of seeds five by default but you can change that great okay then below that are some parameters of how it grows so you have the lifetime so right now they're living for 30 seconds i can make it so they only live for two seconds 2.8 so that's the lifetime then you have the max height so they can grow only that high or that high this does make a difference for like releasing pollen and pollinating more trees so height you know, and all of them in general will affect how well the tree survives, how much trees it produces, especially when you have other species of trees and they're competing for space and whatnot. Um, growth is like an acceleration of growth. So if it's at 0%, the tree will grow till it hits its max height and die. If you have it higher, it'll reach its max height. Like at 50%, it'll reach its max height at 50% through its life, essentially. Um, greed. So greed is like how much space a tree needs to grow. Um, so if the greed was really high, you won't see it now, but if I made a new set, the seeds won't sprout unless they have like a lot of space. So right now only two seeds sprouted because each of them needs a lot of space. But if I turn greed down, we'll have more. Um, so then you can control like, you know, if you want them really bunched up close or spread apart. Fertility says how often a tree will produce pollen and how likely it will create a seed when pollen crosses it. And one tree can't create a seed itself. It has to receive pollen from another tree of the same species. Um, okay, maturity says the percentage of its lifetime when it starts being able to produce seeds and pollen. So if it's at 0%, the tree can produce seeds and pollen right away. If it's higher, it can only start doing it later in its life. Okay, now this brings us to this big knob. This is the mutation knob. And before we get into that, we should probably talk about how genetics work in this device. Um, I'm going to demonstrate that maybe with pitch because we can hear it. So let's go over here to pitch. See, pitch just controls the speed and uh, pitch of the playback. <laughs> 
Okay, so you notice next to a lot of the bigger knobs, there's these little circles. These are just smaller knobs. You see, you can turn them up. And these knobs, these smaller knobs, they're the genetic variation for that parameter. So let's say, you know, we want, let's say we want all the trees five steps higher in pitch, but let's say we want some genetic variance. So like, let's say maybe this tree we want at five steps, but maybe these other trees, we want them to be different pitches. So this knob says how much genetic variance, or in other words, how much modulation or CV is applied to this parameter. So if I turn that up, their pitches should spread out, especially if we have a lot more trees. Let me turn up the volume so we can hear that. So right now they're all the same pitch, and then I'll turn up the genetic variance. So yeah, it essentially spread out the pitch for them. Let's do the same thing with but with the grain size so we can visually see it. So right now they all have a short grain size, but if I give it genetic variance, I think right now they're sharing a lot of the same DNA. So let me actually plant more seeds. And if you plant more seeds, that means that there's more genetic variety. So now let's plant 15 seeds. Each of these seeds have their own DNA. Now let's, now let's try adding genetic variants and seeing how different they can become. So hopefully you can see some are like really fast and some are slower because they have some genetic variance to their grain size. That's what the size is, sorry, this is the grain size. So that's kind of how the genetics work. They, each tree has a DNA sequence and each DNA value modulates a specific parameter. So let's say it had, it has more than this, so let's say it had, uh, Let's say it had let's say it had eight values in its DNA. Then the first DNA value might be for lifetime, the second might be height, growth, etc. And the last one might be pitch or center. So that's kinda how it works. And then when they create a new seed, when two trees create a new seed, the D the seed gets the DNA from both of its parents. So both of the parent the tree and the pollen's DNA mixes fifty percent at random and creates a new set of DNA that the new seed holds, um, just like real DNA uh, <laughs> reproduction. So that's how the DNA works, and that's how this evolves, like, um, or that's how this changes. Like, they keep sharing different DNA. So maybe this tree has a short grain size w and is panned to the right. And maybe this tree has a long grain size is panned to the left. And then if they create a new seed, maybe their son is panned to the right but has a long grain size. That's kind of how the inheritance works. And yeah, so that's how the DNA works. Now, getting back to the mutation, what the mutation does is says the likelihood that a DNA will mutate when a new seed is made. So instead of, say, getting like the DNA from its parents, now there's a 74% chance, 74% chance that instead it will just get a random value. So if you want there to be new genetic variety always made and not just shared, you just turn the mutation up. And if the mutation is really high, then new seeds will just have like lots of new um, DNA. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, so basically the whole DNA thing is just to add modulation um, through different generations. Um, oh yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so that's this section. Oh, except for here. So this little thing opens up a pop-out menu for what kind of soil the tree eats. So right now, this pink tree eats all the different types of soil. It eats the brown soil, the green, and these other two. Only right now the brown soil is on. So if I tell it to stop eating brown soil, you see it, it just stops growing. And now it will die because it starves to death. So now when new seeds drop, they just die. And if I tell it to eat brown soil again, they'll start growing. So this way you could have, 
you could design a species of tree to only eat certain audio sources or however you want to do it. So for example, you could have like, like we had before the green and the brown and the green is my voice and the brown is the guitar. And then you could say, oh, I only want this tree species to eat the brown, the guitar. So I only want this tree species to say, sample um, the guitar. And then maybe I want another tree species like this one to only sample the voice. So now if I clear it, only the pink seeds will grow on the brown soil and only the yellow seeds will grow on the green soil. And that equates to these yellow trees only play my voice and these brown trees only play the guitar. And that could be useful because maybe you want this tree filtered differently than this tree or like pitched differently, you know? Like there's all kinds of reasons you might want to do that. Um, okay, the other thing in this menu is this pitch filter. And this says that if you turn this on, then um, right now they won't grow because um, it says that it not only will it only eat the soil, but it only eats certain notes. So you could say, I only want it to eat C notes, or you only want it to sample these notes, right? And then, so what happens is there's a pitch detection done on the soil, and it says, if the soil has any of these notes in the pitch detection, then it will eat it. And if it has none of these notes, if I just turned all these notes off, then it just won't even grow. Um, or if I turn these notes on, you know, it's only growing some of the time because it only sometimes detects this. I will say this is a very rudimentarily done thing, and you could even get some clicks and stuff using this, so use at your own caution. Okay, so that's this whole section. Uh, this, these two sections are for, th so this one's the playback parameters, and um, we already kind of were looking at them. You know, we have the grain size, uh, above that, we have the playback direction. Um, I can have it backwards. And then you can add genetic variants to that, too. So now some will play forward, some will play backward, depending on their DNA. Okay, and then the grain size. The grain size also has a, a sync option, this button right here. And then you can do synchronized um, playback with the transport. Um, or you can do it in milliseconds. And then we have the pitch transposition. Keep in mind, pitch changes speed, so that will affect the green size. Um, you can add genetic variants to the pitch. And then with genetic variants, you can also scale it. So let's say that for a good example, let's try to just sample one note. So I'll just like try to drag a really small spot in the sample playback here. No, that's not even going to work because these are chords. Um, okay, let me drop in this flute. And it has a single note right here. So I'll highlight that. And so if I clear the forest, they're all going to play one note. Now let's add some genetic variants on the pitch. Now it's now if we wanted all that variance to actually be in a scale interval, we can set it with scale. So let's hear it and add a scale. You can even just do octaves. Cool, so that works best with single notes pitches, but it just depends what you do. You can also work with other stuff. Um, all right, then you have the fade window. So, you know, this is the shape of the fade window of the grain playback, and you can kind of see it in the visual. So if I turn the shape up, it's more staccato. And if I turn this down, it's just more open. Um, let's keep it on staccato because we can see it really well. All right, then you can change the center so you can have it more at the start or at the end. Let's do the forward direction. If it's going forward and it's at the start, it's like more staccato hits. And if it's on the other way, it's the reverse. 
Yeah, so, you know, a sharp attack or a soft attack, basically. And then this is just the amount of fading, which you probably would want some. You'd get clicks without it, unless you want clicks. Um, all right, then let's go to the effects settings. So you have a filter, a delay, an overdrive, and gain and pan. So it's nice to add genetic variation to the pan, usually. You get these cool panning effects that change over time. Um, the filter, you have a standard biquad filter, which you can also, of course, add genetic variation to, um, which is also usually a nice thing to do. And then you can have a ladder filter mode if you want something a different sounding, not necessarily better, but it is a bit higher quality and it, it is more CPU consuming, but it also just sounds different, so you may or may not want it. Uh, if you turn the, if you go to the bandpass filter of the ladder and turn the QA up, the, you'll get basically resonators, so that could also be cool. Um, of course, it depends on the sound source a little bit. Okay, anyway. Um, let me go back. Okay. Um, okay, and then you have a delay. Also nice to add genetic variants on here. If you turn it really low and add genetic variants, you can do cool delay, coursey things. Flandry, I don't know. Aphasery, I don't know. And um, anyway, um, what else? And then overdrive and gain and, gain and pan. All right, so that's the tree. Hopefully that all made sense. You have different tree species. Each species has its own playback and effects parameters. Um, so each tree species can sound very different. They can also eat completely different sources. Um, so yeah, they can be all very different from each other and make like very immersive soundscapes. Or you can have it very simple, it just depends. Um, or you can have a performance set up with all this. That can be very um, interesting. So, okay, that's like most of the meat of the device. Now it's just these things at the bottom. So this is just like a master thing. A lock, lock to transport, if that's on, now it won't play back and the simulation won't run unless live transport is running. So right now live transport is not running. If I run it, like now, it starts running. If I stop it, it stops. So that's good to, you know, if you don't want it running while you're not running live. It's transport, you can also transpose all of the pitches of all the tree species with this. You can do a master pan and gain. And then mix, it won't do anything now because there's no audio going directly into here. But if you are using this as an audio effect and audio is going into the input, then you can use mix to mix the sources, uh, dry and wet. All right, and here at the very bottom is um, this duo LFO. So y you can do a lot of like kind of modulation stuff with the DNA, but this just gives you actual like movement. So you have a pretty standard LFO. You can just choose the destination here, say of the grain size of the first forest, and then add in some depth. And now, now you can see the grain size of this um, is modulating. Cool, so it's pretty limited, but you can already do a lot with the device. And then the final thing is if I close the device, or you don't have to close it, but on this visual, if you drop an image like it says here, then that image will take place of these top treetops. So let me drop in an image of a cat. And now the top, top tree tops are all little cats. It works best if you do transparent images that are cropped at the very bottom so that they sit right on the trees and that are squares. You should make it a square. Um, here's a moon. All right, cool. I think that covers everything. Thanks so much for checking out Green Forest. I hope it's very uh, powerful for you.